Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode of Intermediate Photoshop, I'm going to demonstrate a technique that will allow you to extract tremendous detail from your image. I learned this technique several years ago when I was a guest of a camera club and I thought it was fantastic and used it all the time. More recently, I've seen a demonstration of this technique from a German photographer named Calvin Hollywood. Calvin calls it freaky amazing details and he teaches it slightly different than the way I learned it but I prefer the way Calvin does it because it's a bit easier and produces the same exact results. In the description below this video I'll have a link to Calvin's YouTube channel so you could check him out. Most of his videos are in German but he does have several in English so you could check those out. Now as far as this image this is a really old image of my son Joe. I was testing out a new light modifier and I just threw him up against the wall and took a snapshot. The image hasn't been processed at all. It's just a flat snapshot of Joe and I think it will work well to demonstrate how much detail you could extract from the scene with this technique. Now to begin with I have the image in Photoshop. I mentioned nothing was done to it at all. The first step is to make two copies of the background layer. In Photoshop, the easiest way to make a copy if you have a Mac is to hit Command J. If you have a PC, hit Control J. So I have a Mac, I'm going to hit Command J once and Command J a second time. So I have those two copies. The next step is to put both of those copies into a group. To do that, make sure they're both selected. I have one selected over here. I'm going to hold the command key and click on the second one so they're both selected. Of course, if you have a PC, you'd hold the control key in to select them both. Then I'm going to go down here at the very bottom and there's a little icon that looks like a folder. Click on that. That's our group. Now we have both of those layers, those copied layers, inside of a group. I'm going to rename the group. You don't have to. But I'm going to rename the group Details. So I have both of the layers now inside of the group details. The next step is to change the blend mode of the group. So make sure you're clicked on the group. In this case, it's got a little folder there and it says details. Go up here to where it now says pass through and change that to overlay. The next step, click on the top layer that is inside of that group. So we're on the top layer now and change the blend mode of that top layer to vivid light. All right, it's looking a little crazy, but don't worry, it's going to change. Now the next step is we need to invert this layer. The easiest way to do it is it to hit Command I if you have a Mac or Control I if you have a PC. That's I for invert. So I have a Mac, I'm hitting Command I. So it inverted that layer. Now, the next step is optional, but I suggest you do it. We're going to convert this layer to a smart object. The reason why I suggest you do it is if you make it a smart object, the next adjustment, the actual adjustment that makes the detail pop, you could come in and readjust it later if you're using a smart object. If you're not using a smart object, you won't be able to come in and readjust it later. So. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I'm going to go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Click on that. It's going to come up with this. Just click OK. And when you do that, now we have a smart object. Now, this is the part where we actually make it pop with detail. To do that, we're going to add a filter to it, but we're going to add a blur filter to it. It's counterintuitive, but if you remember, we inverted the layer. So when you invert the layer, if you sharpen something, you're really going to make it blurry. Or if you add blur to something, you're really going to make it sharper. So you're doing opposites because the layer is inverted. So we're going to go up to Filter, down to Blur, and then down to Surface Blur. And as, they, as soon as you kick, see that kick in, you could see the detail that it extracted. I'm going to turn it off and then on. And the reason why obviously I picked this image is because my son was like 13 and you could see he's got black heads and stuff. You didn't notice them as readily when 
you know, the image was just loaded into Photoshop, but as soon as you do this technique, it brings out a tremendous amount of detail. Now, as far as the settings of radius and threshold, I found that radius between 10 and 30 usually works well, and the threshold between 10 and 30 as well, but as far as threshold is concerned, you have to be careful because especially if you have lights in the scene, like if this was a background with a city behind him in the evening with lights and stuff, if you turn threshold up too high, you'll get haloing. Now, as far as the radius, the lower you go, it will only um, really affect the smaller detail. As you move it up, it will start affecting larger detail. You can see how it does that. So you could move this around to your liking, to something that works for you. Then you could click OK when you're done. Now because I mentioned we or why we did that, we created that smart object, I could come back in now and readjust this. Without the smart object, I wouldn't be able to readjust it. To readjust it where it says surface blur, just double click on that and then you could come back in and you could readjust this surface blur filter and then you could you know make it more custom to your image now one thing that you might want to do is create an, a Photoshop action so this is all automated and does it automatically so what I did is I did create an action and I'll have it on my website uh, in the marketplace uh, for you to download I'll have no price on it if you'd like to make a donation uh, to help me make better videos and keep making these free uh, videos I welcome it but you don't have to if you can't afford to definitely just uh, take the action uh, with my compliments so what we're gonna do here to demonstrate how to load the action into Photoshop I'm gonna delete this so we're back to our original image so if you download the action from me uh, just put it somewhere where you could find it. I have it right here on my desktop. And then go into Photoshop, open up the Actions tab. It's right here. Now I'm in the Photography Workspace. And if you look here, if you click like right here, see this icon? And make sure you're in the Photography Workspace. And then your workspace or your Photoshop workspace will look like mine. And you'll be able to find what I'm doing a little easier. So right here is the Actions pane. Click on that. Then right here, this little lines, this is a flyout menu. We're going to click on that, and we're going to load Actions right there. And once we do that, I'm going to go to the desktop. There, It's called Morganti Details. My apologies to Calvin. He calls it Freaky Amazing Details. We're going to click Open. So there it is now in this folder called Morganti Details, it's called Details. Just highlight the details, then hit the play button. One thing you have to be aware of, this action will only work on a locked background layer. So if you had stuff in Photoshop and you did a ton of work on it and you have all these layers on here and you try to run the action, you're going to come up with the uh, errors. It has to be run on a locked background layer. So we highlighted or clicked on where it says details and there's a little play button right there. See that little triangle? Click on that and it will automatically run the action and we're all set. And then you could come in and readjust the surface blur so it best fits your image by double clicking again on the word surface blur, the words surface blur and readjust radius and threshold so it better fits your image. So that's it for this episode of Intermediate Photoshop. Thank you to Calvin Hollywood for the great technique. Thank you, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.